on this video, you may be asking yourself if you need to buy a sawmill. And we'll get to that in a minute. You know, having family land, I've seen over the years what the timber industry can do uh, to your property and, you know, how little they pay when they cut trees. They also, they leave a lot of, you know, waste behind. They don't, they don't really, a lot of times, clean up after themselves. They'll run over a lot of small trees and sometimes they, met, they can tend to mess up property more than they help. Obviously, the financial benefit of cutting your timber, you know, is what the reason why most people cut their timber. But so from the beginning, I've been researching, you know, would it be worth to get a sawmill? Would it be worth it or would it not be worth it? Now, keep watching and I'll answer that question for myself. But uh, first, I'd like to answer the question for you. You know, getting out there in the woods and cutting trees and, and cutting on a sawmill, there's nothing like cutting a tree into lumber. The feeling of taking a tree to lumber that's been blown over or struck by lightning or hit by a storm and turning that into something use useful is like nothing else in woodworking. You know, obviously, we can't take a feeling and go spend thousands of dollars on a feeling. It's got to make sense. So the first question you should ask yourself is, what are you going to do with a sawmill? And maybe what your wife is going to ask you is, what, what do you think you're going to do with a sawmill? But, you know, when we got our mill, you know, we're planning to use it to sell wood. But the first thing we had in mind was to build some barns and do some things that we needed on the farm or around the house. So that's what we used for, for at first. We would build, uh, I built the timber frame and I did some work on porches and things like that. Used it to build some shooting houses. So for five years, I only used my sawmill for personal projects. So my first question would be, if you're asking yourself, do you need a sawmill, is do you have enough personal projects that if you never sold a board, it'd be worth it to buy a sawmill? Now, if the answer to that question is yes, then you need a sawmill. If the answer is no, then keep watching because we still may be able to help you to justify why you might need a sawmill. But So let's look at three different types of people and we'll see how they could use a sawmill. Uh, type one is a subdivision guy. Now this is the least likely person that would need a sawmill, but if you have an itch, then we're here to help you out. Now, my sawmill is a portable sawmill, but I don't take it places because I, I don't need to, and it's just too much of a pain for me to have to load the thing up. Most of my work is done uh, on our place. So, but I have received many calls from people wanting me to bring the sawmill to, uh, to cut up a log. Of course, I always turn it down and try to help them find somebody that, that can cut it for them. But that tells me there's a, there's a lot of people out there that want their trees cut up. You can charge by the hour. You can cut on halves. But people in town have to remove trees all the time. And many times these trees have some sentimental value. A storm may have blown it down. And they want to salvage it. And, and when people find out you got a sawmill, then your phone's going to going to ring pretty consistently. So if you're a subdivision guy and you and you can and you can get to places and take it and you got a truck and you want to pull your sawmill places, that's a you, you can make money with a sawmill. Now, the next type of person would I consider would be a new homesteader. Maybe you're new to homesteading or you just you just bought 20 or 30 acres and you're you're interested in a sawmill, then you need to look into getting a small portable sawmill. Now you could still take it and cut wood for other people. But you also need to cut lumber for yourself. This could uh, be a way you could get some side income if you sell eggs or you sell goats or cheese or whatever. And all that stuff don't pan out. Or if it does pan out and you just want to make some extra money, then you'd have uh, plenty of wood to sell to people and, and also to for any needs you may have around the farm. Uh, you've probably already got a tractor. You've probably already got a chainsaw. So uh, that would kind of be the next piece of equipment purchase that you could need and really use uh, then the size of the sawmill that you need would depend on the amount of land that you have if you have a small track of land then you'll probably want to buy a smaller sawmill but if you have a big track of land then you probably will want to buy a obviously a bigger sawmill so the third type of person would be a person who owns you know 100 plus acres now there are some tools and pieces of equipment that you have that when you get it you'll never be able to do without them one of them's a chainsaw. Everybody needs a chainsaw if you live on some land. But another is a tractor. If you have more than 100 acres or even less, you, you, you need a tractor. But the next thing on that list might be a sawmill. Now, a sawmill is a tool that can be used to salvage fallen trees, uh, to build needed buildings. 
If you plan on selling your sawmill service, then you could you have plenty of business to do that. When people find out you have a sawmill, you're going to be receiving calls. If you want to get value out of your own trees, then you'll be able to maximize the standing trees and the fallen trees by having a sawmill. You know, the way I sell it is through Facebook Marketplace, and there's seldom a day when I don't get a message about lumber. If I wanted to undercut or to cheapen my practice, my prices, I would have people wanting lumber every day. I try to maximize my prices by cutting things that nobody else can get anywhere, that they can't get anywhere else. But if I just wanted to work and uh, make money and didn't worry about cutting all my trees down, I, I, I could sell lumber every day because people are asking every day. But most of it I turn down because it's not, the kind of cut that I want to do but uh, and many people want it for free on Facebook so you have to weed through a lot of people but uh, when they, when you do people will pay um, but again I would try to if you have a sawmill I try to specialize in wood that the store can't, that you can't buy at the store because that'll give you plenty of wood to cut you don't want to cut all your trees up but so I would try to specialize in that now when you go in with two by stuff like you can buy at Lowe's I try to undercut them a little bit but, you know, if you try to get too far down, you're going to be spending a lot of time cutting and not making a whole lot of money. You want to try to cut stuff that you can't get. But, but if you've got some unwanted pine or that you want to cut, then you can, you can do that. But maybe, how much are my trees worth? That may be a question that you ask when you're trying to think about if you want a sawmill or not. Now, I don't want to overstate the value of your trees, but to say the landowner doesn't make very much per tree would be an understatement as far as when you get... Uh, your timber cut in my area they pay by the ton and this doesn't really work out for the for the for the landowner and the person who's getting his timber cut the you know if you can sell your lumber to an individual you'll get five times at least to, to up to ten times the value of what a logger is going to give you now obviously there's a lot of work involved from start to finish and if you don't enjoy that type of work then you know, obviously owning a sawmill may not be for you, but, but it's something to look into if you like to be outdoors, like to be in the woods. And you don't have to make it a full-time job. I mean, it's it's something that you can do on the side. I mean, it's not something that you have to do as a full-time job. But So should you buy a sawmill? Well, obviously my answer for me is yes. But keep in mind, I have unlimited access to trees. So my raw material is pretty much free. So I might be a little biased in one direction. If, but... If something happened to my sawmill, I would call Woodmiser and order one that day. It's one of those tools that has become a piece of equipment that I can't I can't do without. I use it weekly, sometimes daily. People are constantly calling me or messaging me wanting lumber. And the demand has not slowed since the first ad that I placed on Facebook Marketplace. Um, but for me, it's not about the money as much as it is the freedom the sawmill gives you, whether it's white oak or walnut or cherry. I can get great joy out of salvaging those trees that would have gone to waste or become firewood. I've built furniture from my own lumber. Uh, I built a sol solar kiln so I could dry my lumber. Now, there are options where you can buy cheaper sawmills to start your sawmill journey, but um, that's where I would do if I had to start over. You know, if I could go back and tell myself something 10 years ago, I'd say, hey, get this LT-15, this wood miser, 25 whatever the smaller ones and i would start there and then i would work uh my way up i mean you can get a small sawmill for probably five thousand dollars so would i buy a sawmill yeah i think anybody has any bit of property and land and some trees should own a sawmill